Today, we're gonna build a very simple level shifter for your WS2812 projects to run on an ESP or Raspberry Pi 3.3 volt data. You already know why you might need one because you clicked on this video. So if you're getting flickering things like that, yes, you can buy a level shifter. Don't bother with those. You can build one with nothing more than a few resistors and a voltage comparator. If you're new here, welcome to Justin Nelson's Projects where we do everything from 3D printing, which you're gonna hear in the background throughout some of this video, sorry about that, to electronics, automotive, you name it. Today we're building a level shifter because I'm really tired of building them and selling them and they're very easy if you just understand a little bit of basic electronics. So I'm gonna walk you through that on the whiteboard here. Right now, we've got the ESP32 or Raspberry Pi or whatever. And over here, we've got our LED strip. In my case, I'm powering the ESP32 from the same supply as the LED strip. It's just a lot easier that way, using the VN or 5V pin. And of course, the grounds are connected together. But something has to go between our 3.3 volt data and the data pin that's expecting five volts. And that is our voltage comparator. Yes, that looks like an op amp because they function very, very similarly. This is our inverting input and this is our non-inverting input. The way a voltage comparator works, if the plus input, we're just gonna call it the plus input, if it is higher than the voltage on the minus input, then the output is high. If this is lower than the minus input, then the output is low. It's a simple binary on or off. So we're gonna tie the output directly to the LED strip. However, most voltage comparators, including the LM393 we're gonna use today, are what's called open collector. What that means is it pulls it to ground and then for a one, it lets go. It doesn't supply five volts, so we need a pull-up resistor. In this case, I like to use a 470 ohm resistor. Let's focus on the output of the ESP. So we're gonna take that through a 4.7K resistor to the plus input, and then another 4.7K taking us to ground. This represents an almost 10 kilo ohm input impedance. What that's also doing is cutting that 3.3 volt data in half to about 1.6 volts, 1.65. So we need a reference here of half of that, so about point seven, eight, something like that. That is where we're gonna build a little voltage divider. So from the minus input, we're gonna have a resistor to that five volt rail, and this is 4.7K again. I try to use the same values and common values throughout. It just makes things easier. We're gonna jump over this and another resistor to ground, and this is a one Hey, that will give you a voltage here of, it's on the screen, but it's somewhere around 0.8 volts. So this is always being compared to this steady voltage here on the minus input. Now, one more thing we might wanna do is a little thing called hysteresis. Hysteresis is simply when the output goes high, it should take a little more to pull it back down. And when it goes low, it should take a little more to push it back up. It's what keeps your furnace from kicking on and off constantly. The easiest way to do that is positive feedback. So we're gonna take our output and I'm not drawing this the way I drew it on my cheat sheet. We need a 100K resistor going to this point. It's really going from the output directly to the plus input. So yeah, I didn't draw that quite the way I planned, but I told myself I was doing this in one take today. So this will become this. And we're gonna go in the other room and do this on a breadboard. So follow me into the other room. So for demonstration purposes, I've got a strip of WS2812B. In fact, it's an entire roll, but I've got WLED on here, this ESP32 set to just drive that little strip right there. So let's go ahead and put power to the strip. And we're gonna plug this directly into the ESP32. It's gonna power the ESP32 and get its data directly from D16. And that works, works most of the time. And in fact, if I go into WLED and I select it and I say, I want the chase rainbow effect, then we get the chasing rainbow effect. Not as effective on only a handful of LEDs, but you get the idea. And this does work most of the time, however, Occasionally you might get glitches from outside interference. Well, you already know. That's why you clicked on this video. You know why you need a level shifter. So we're going to disconnect that. 
and we're gonna build one on a breadboard just so I can show you how exactly this level shifter works. Now, we are using this IC, and this IC is an LM393 dual voltage comparator. Why dual? Well, that's generally how they're sold, and you just buy whatever's cheapest. So we're only gonna use one half of it. But pro tip, if you wanna do two level shifters out of this, you can simply copy everything to the other side as well. And in fact, you can even share the inverting input between the two because the reference voltage is going to be the same. As shown on the whiteboard, here is our schematic that we wanna go with. So first, I've got our handy dandy color coded wires here. I'm gonna use this rail for negative and this rail for the positive five volts. Why? Simply because on this IC, in this orientation, this is our positive leg and that is our negative leg. And the little notch is pointing that way, indicating the top, I guess. So that's pin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Pin eight connects to our plus five volts and pin four to the minus. So we're gonna go ahead and let's do this a little closer here. Connect our minus and I've color coded everything. We're gonna connect our plus rail down here to the red and then the green wire, which is our output, is gonna to connect to this green jumper. Now, the reason I've jumpered these is just to separate some stuff so we don't have all those resistors just piled up in this little area here. So, on this row right here, we're connecting our data out. So, what else needs to connect to the data out? Well, we need a 470 ohm pull-up resistor, and that would be this guy here. So he's gonna connect from the positive five volts to, uh, I should have probably moved that over to give a little room, and it's gonna connect here. And that's pulling up so that when this shuts off, stops grounding, we get five volts through a 470 ohm resistor. And when it pulls down, it pulls it down to zero. The next step in our level shifter is gonna be, let's do the voltage divider on the inverting input, the minus input. Now that is the second pin over, which I've jumped with a gray wire here. That consists of a 4.7K resistor. I've tried to lay these out so I don't mix them up or anything. So a 4.7K from positive, remember we're taking positive way down here, or we can take it from this here where it goes to the IC. And let's do that because it's a shorter jump. That's pulling five volts to there. And then we're gonna take our 1K resistor and take that same point, that same rail, and take it to ground. So what that does is that gives us our reference voltage. That's everything connected to the inverting input. Now the non-inverting, I've jumped that over this way because that's where we're gonna connect our ESP32. Another 47, sorry, 4.7K resistor to ground. So let's just do that over here. Anywhere on this ground rail will be just fine on this particular breadboard. Be careful, if you see a gap in these lines, some breadboards, such as this guy here, have a gap between those because this side and this side are not connected. I learned that the hard way. But back to the task at hand. So we've got our 4.7K going to ground and another 4.7K is gonna go from here to, well, just somewhere over here because that's gonna be our input from the ESP32. And the final piece, and this is what makes it stable, that 100K resistor we talked about, we're gonna take it straight from the output of the IC and take it right to the non-inverting input. So we're gonna find a spot on this rail, which is the first pin, pin one, and tie it to where this yellow wire connects. So that lets us space the resistors out just by jumping everything a little bit away from this. You should have seen the first version. Things were touching things that shouldn't have been, and it was a disaster. Let's see if we get this on the first try. So we're gonna disconnect that connector. We're gonna grab these three wires, jumper wires that I just dropped on the floor. And I'm using yellow to indicate our 3.3 volt data instead of green. It's only green when it's five volt data. So our positive, we're gonna run this from the power coming from the ESP. So our five volt in and our ground Remembering the top here is our ground, down here is our plus five volts. With that said, let's plug power in and we should get the same results, albeit covered up by a piece of paper, but you should see it just fine. 
And now, when we go into WLED again, first of all, let's see that it's connecting to it. Okay, no problem. And let's turn on the Chase Rainbow. And sure enough, everything works just like before. But the difference, the main difference here is that if there were any static interference on this line or this line, it's not gonna make this thing flicker. So that is the simplest level shifter I can think of. And that will give you a perfect result a reliable result and this can all be done surface mount however you want to solder it integrate that into your circuit design and you'll have flawless leds every single time with that thanks for watching comment below and i'll see you on the next one